Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once more to the 18th group exhibit of hydrogen fuel cells at Hanover Fair 2012. My name is Quella Hermans and I would like to invite you now to join us, take a seat. We have coffee, we have juice for you. Um, just join us uh, in our next discussion. I'm uh, pretty confident you'll find it very interesting because we're going to explore the uh, state and perspectives of PEM electrolysis. And here with me to join me on stage is a sales manager at CTH2, Pascal Pivinsky. So please join us and welcome with me now, give a warm welcome to Pascal Pivinsky. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, in Hall 27, and we're part of the energy stream at uh, Hanover Fair 2012. Um, Mr. Pivinsky, first of all, your company makes electrolysis, electrolyzers. Mm -hmm. Why? Why do we make PEM electrolyzers? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, we make electrolyzers to run a company to make a living. That's maybe one of the first reasons to do something in the industry. And why on PEM electrolyzers? Because we believe that PEM electrolyzers have a great opportunity in regards to the opening of the markets of renewable energies of fueling stations. And we believe that PEM electrolyzers offer some quite substantial advantages in terms of electrolysis technology to uh, have a, an interesting technical offer for these markets. And is there anybody else in Europe that is doing uh, what you're doing in this area? So there are, there are some PEM electrolyzers uh, manufacturers worldwide, but in the range of uh, 5 to 40 cubic meters an hour electrolyzers, which is what we do, there are not so many companies in the world. And uh, I think in Europe at the moment we are the only company who has a commercial offer in that area. Okay, tell us that one more time in a sentence. What is the unique uh, uh, spe special thing that you do? Well, the, the the interesting and unique part on PEM electrolyzers, first of all, is that uh, in uh, they are it's it's a new technology in terms of electrolyzers. Well, it's a new it's a technology which was developed from uh, the Apollo Gemini program, uh, which is now about four years, 40 years. But it was de more dedicated to uh, space and military industry, and with the development of uh, fuel cells and of PEM fuel cells. Uh, this technology has come to a maturity that it can serve industrial purposes on industrial markets. So uh, this is, let's say, if, if I make a short sentence, it's the modern way of doing electrolyzers. Okay. The modern way of doing electrolyzers. Um, I will encourage the audience very much to also ask questions. Uh, do we have one already? If so, a little hand sign will suffice and I'll come to you. Okay, keep thinking with us. There might be some questions coming up and we're very, very happy to have you ask them. So don't be shy, uh, do get involved. Okay, let's ask uh, adversely, is there anything at all that's wrong with PEM? <laughs> <laughs> are, there any, are there any remaining weaknesses or anything that, no. that might rehabilitate the well, you know, alkaline the, electrolyzer? The, the reputation of the main weakness of PEM which is a reputation only, is the cost and the price. Uh, today we have, we, have a, we have an offer which is uh, extremely reliable in terms of her performance, which is as efficient as traditional alkaline electrolyzers, uh, and which offers flexibility, lifetime, and cost effectiveness. Okay? So if you look at the, the four or five criterias uh, you decide to choose an electrolyzer, today, at least in the range of five to 40 cubic meters an hour, is, which is our offer, there's no real reason to, 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 to purchase any other technology. And um, what about reliability? Can you well, say a little more about that? Reliability is one of the, one of the points we, we focus on and, and we, we enhance in our offer in the way that we're a young company, we, come, we exist since 15 years, we come from R&D, uh, and since three years now we have, we have an industrial commercial offer. So of course we don't have the track record which uh, more traditional technologies can offer. 
Uh, but we are being extremely conservative in our technical parameters we're using in our PEM electrolyzers to be able to offer 35,000 hours with less 10% efficiency loss on an electrolyzer, which is, I think, quite unique in the positioning of the company. That does sound quite substantial, yes. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions at this point? I would like to know the efficiency and at which conditions we have that efficiency, the better one, and as well the limited conditions, for example in hot countries, to which extent can it work, and if it works at these extreme conditions, to which extent the efficiency would be degraded. So actually you're right, when you talk about efficiency, you have to consider efficiency at an optimal, at an optimal point. So efficiency at an optimal point is related to current density, to voltage and to temperature, okay? Meaning that if you run an electrolyzer which is brand new at 20 degrees and you ask him to produce, let's say, 20 cubic meters, which would be his nominal power capacity, uh, then you won't be at the optimal point of efficiency, okay? So when we talk about efficiency, we talk about efficiency in a certain range of temperature for which also rectifiers are dimensioned and so on. So this is, this is, this is a very, it's a very important point. Thank you for that question because it's, I, I feel it's accurate. Now, the, the second point to answer your question is that, of course, we're talking, you know, we have to, to talk on a standard basis. So when we talk about efficiency, for example, our 20 cubic meter electrolyzer uses 5 kilowatt hour per cubic meter of hydrogen generated, 5, okay? So a 20 cubic meter is a 100 kilowatt rectifier. Um, uh, this efficiency is optimal in the conditions I said. Now, for very hot countries, you need to have thermal regulation, okay, thermal regulation of the process, which is the case of our electrolyzers. So electrolyzers, our electrolyzers have a, have a, a PLC control uh, with a regulation of temperature so that the process always takes place at the most efficient point, okay, in terms of temperature again, current and voltage. And afterwards, you have auxiliaries if you have containerized solutions for hot countries where, of course, you have to add either uh, heating if it's Siberia or uh, climate cooling if it's Saudi Arabia. I hope this answers your question. Uh, in extreme conditions, to which extent it will degrade the efficiency by, for well, example, at best 5 kilowatts? For one cubic meter, yes. For such condition, it will be ten kilowatts per cubic meter, or seven. No, that, that that is the 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 whole efficiency of the system is going to depend on the the consumption of the auxiliaries. The process itself has regulated temperature, so you always try to keep it at a specific temperature under certain electrical conditions. The, 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 the global efficiency of the system is going to depend on how many auxiliaries you bring in there. If you need to cool, if you need to warm, if it's 40, minus 40 degrees outside, then you need to heat also the, the air volume in which the electrolyzer is contained. Okay? Any other questions from the audience at this point? Okay, for those who joined us, uh, welcome. We're talking about state and perspectives of PEM electrolysis. And here with me is Pascal Pevinsky of CTH2. Um, tell us a little bit more about who your customers are. Who do you work with? So, we, yeah, okay. We we have a we have a, um, a focus of uh, penetrating industrial market for electrolyzers because that market is is an actual market. It's a it's real economy, okay. And uh, this is what can bring our business to be to make a living out of it. And with the perspective of going to renewable energies applications or mobility, it gives also the legitimacy to be on the market. Okay, the legitimacy. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, regarding industrial applications, you have three major fields where electrolyzers are used, uh, and also are used. Again, I always have to, 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 to give the precision in, in the size or capacities of what we build, okay? Which, of, is, which is from 5 to 40 cubic meters an hour. Uh, you have alternator cooling, you have uh, heat treatment processes, and you have glass production processes. Now, in these three areas, in these three industries, the market for electrolyzers is specifically in 
outside Europe in uh, uh, economically uh, growing or catching up countries, okay? Emerging so it, markets. Yeah, okay. Emerging markets, exactly. It, it's, it's never in industrialized countries with high density population. Okay. Now the next step, of course, because being an R&D company for more than 10 years, okay, which is a lot of funding, uh, there has to be an economic reason for that behind it. And the economic reason for that, for that effort, is of course the emerging markets of renewable energies, energy storage, or a fueling station for cars. Okay, this is, these are the different panels what we address on the renewable energy market more through um, uh, cooperations, projects which are also partially state funded, etc. And I must say we are also getting now the attentions of more I would say not unconventional, but curiously, the industries which were at the origin of PEM electrolyzing, meaning military industry or space industry. I see. Moving on from existing customers and markets and possibly emerging uh, uh, new ones, who would you most like to connect to here at Hanover Fair 2012? Who would you like to meet, who should come and talk to? Well, I, we we think that the H2FC within the Hanover Fair is is a is a very interesting. I mean, I think it's the major European event for uh, hydrogen technologies, and uh, we are here as a French company because we know that in Europe the leadership is Germany. Uh, Germany has plans and perspectives to develop fueling stations. So this is really, in fact, what we should call our domestic market. <laughs> Okay, and our, our, our core market, uh, and we're here, you know, to get, give our company a bit more visibility, uh, visibility to institutions, associations, but also to big gas companies and engineering companies to make integration on these big renewable projects. So you have sort of anticipated my, my next uh, question there. I'm so sorry. Th that's absolutely <laughs> fine. <laughs> um, I was going to ask whether you see Germany as a peripheral or rather core partner in the future. And um, I think you see it... No, we, we, we see it as a, as a core partner, right. of okay. course. Uh, I mean, we are, we're thinking about grounding a company in Germany. There are, there, are, there are many, many, many perspectives Germany is offering. Uh, as well also you have of course USA and Japan but these have these countries have different confederations one of, one of the important things to understand is that the the um, the the idea of building fueling stations with electrolyzers have m making hydrogen from renewable energy is related to as i said renewable energy so you need to be in a country where the mi the energy mix has a share of renewable energy which is substantial which is the case of germany so you're you know you're really in the ideal conditions clearly are there any questions or even comments to to what we just heard from you the audience then I will finish with a provocative question. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel that France should have or should follow Germany in what we now call the energy turn and the new way of, uh, of, of doing policy in this area? So, uh, of course, for my business, uh, I think France should. Now, uh, France is also a country where uh, nuclear is 80% of the energy uh, produced. It's a, it's a very large industry. So you, we're not in a situation where we can step out of nuclear industry from one day to the other. There's a commitment from France to have more than 20% renewable energies by 2020. If France reaches that commitment or not, not really sure at the moment. I don't know what is exactly the stage or the development of, of, uh, of wind parks or, or solar energy. There's been a big, uh, a big program for offshore wind parks, which was awarded uh, two weeks ago now. So we're going in that direction. And uh, I think France needs to feel more confident in, uh, in her own industry and in her, her own industry in the renewable energies to maybe accelerate and, and go further steps in that direction. Okay. Final chance to share your thoughts. 
And failing that, I uh, I encourage you. Will you be staying uh, on a little bit uh, after? Yeah, I'll be interview? staying until Friday, Friday afternoon. Obviously, also yeah. for the rest of the fair. That's wonderful. Please uh, feel very encouraged to connect further and continue conversations. Um, it's been a great pleasure having you. All the pleasure was for me. <laughs> and um, I would like to uh, yeah thank uh, Pascal Pavinsky, sales manager at CTH2. Please talk to us afterwards and um, give a warm applause of thank you for Mr. Pavinsky. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm just going to announce the next session briefly. Um, we're going to be discussing five kilowatt natural fuel cell power generators with Tropical SA. In just a minute, please stay with us. <laughs>